Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis, and welcome back to my channel. E.D. Lewis Review is back with an all-new all Nocturnal Review. Um, so, this is one I've been meaning to do for a bit, and, uh, I have to say, uh, it's, it's interesting. So, let me just go ahead and give you the title. It is The Curse of the Vampire by Carl Alexander. Um, it was... I'll, I'll show the cover in just a moment. It was published in, I think it was 1982. Yes, 1982, The Curse of the Vampire, December, so late 1982. And here is the cover. I've actually had this book for quite a while. It's been sitting on my bookshelf. I got it at a library uh, book sale. And uh, I just have not read it till now. And uh, yeah. So, and not right now, but I read it a, a bit ago, a while ago, by the time this video goes up. Um, okay, so let me just read the the, little, the back here. I hardly ever do that, but I'm going to do that here. It'll help me along. Los Angeles actress Melanie Ross is in Transylvania to shoot a film. It is the ancient home of her Romanian ancestors and their tortured spirits. Uh, stalk her every move. On a tour through Vladimir Castle, an ancient evil is unleashed, and a hideous bloodlust invades Melanie's innocent body. By day, she continues her life as an actress on foreign lo on a foreign location shoot. But at dusk, she undergoes horrifying um, transformations. She begins to kill in the shadows shredding her victims' bodies, sucking out their souls, and in her wake, she leaves their gory remains. It is the curse of the vampire, and her savage hunger will not be denied. And then the front here says, In the shadow of the moon, the vampire hunts the night, craving human flesh. Now, the synopsis there is a little misleading because, um... It seems to, you know, point that, you know, she's, you know, she's gone, you know, to film this movie in this foreign location, and that's the entire, you know, run of the book. No, because uh, they finish filming before even half the book is done, like maybe a fourth of the book is done, and they're done with location. She goes back to America. She does return, though, and um, then the rest of the book takes place for the most part back in Transylvania again, but it's just... And there's some other things that are misleading about that that I can't tell you without spoiling it. So Melanie Ross, like it says, she's come to shoot a movie. And shortly before she gets there uh, in the kind of prologue, there's a mysterious murder of a man who's being, he's stalked back to his house and uh, he's, you know, uh, you know, he's murdered, and then that never seems to come back up again for some weird reason. So Melanie is um, shooting this movie, and she's noticed that she's, you know, being watched by this camera guy whose name, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, and I'm sure I'm going to pronounce it wrong, Popescu. That's probably wrong, and I apologize. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. Um, and so she, uh, when she's on her way to uh, shooting for the day, she gets, uh, she sees him on the road, and she has her driver stop, and, um, they pick him up and stuff, and they kind of engage in a conversation. She's interested in him, fascinated by him, but she doesn't really like him, and he kind of, you know, talks his way into kind of a little bit of a friendship with her, and they eventually, um, go out and spend the day with each other. They go to a little festival, they tour a castle, and then ultimately, she finds herself going to his room at the, I think it's the, I think they're staying at the same hotel, and, um, they make love. Bad thing is, she's happily married with two, you know, happily married to her husband, whose name is John Ross, back in the United States. They have two very young boys, um... And she's, you know, lived this happy life, and then she's done, you know, this has happened to her, which completely devastates her. Not to mention at the castle, some little incident happens when they find the secret passageway 
Um, because Papa's Q apparently is like a descendant of like the family who used to own the castle way, way back. And so he knows all these secrets that the government doesn't necessarily know somehow, especially about a secret dungeon. Well, she ends up um, finally telling him goodbye, and she goes back to her life after the movie's filmed, returns to America, and then these strange episodes start happening to her. She starts um, feeling really sick and stuff, and then she'll go through this complete transformation where she doesn't even know who she is. She thinks she's some hideous creature, and she starts um, trying to attack her husband and going and stalking people. And uh, running around naked and stuff while doing all this. And it's it's just really bizarre. She eventually um, goes back to Romania because she thinks she can find the answers there. And she ends up um, getting in contact with this doctor who um, practices all kinds of pseudoscience and stuff. And he may have the answers. And then to top it all off. She is in the middle of a murder investigation as bodies start to pile up um, around her after she returns to Romania and the Romanian police are on, are you know looking into her. So there's that whole thing. It's kind of a crazy book. Um, it, it was really slow at times and to be honest, it's not what you typical th typically think of a vampire story. I did look at the reviews of this while I was reading it on Goodreads, and I'm like, ooh, that's not so favorable. I think I even looked on Amazon. And I understand where the reviews were getting at, and I kind of agreed, but some people have said, this is not a vampire story. There's no vampires in this. Well, that's up for interpretation, because if you look at the Victorian, you know, like, kind of the Victorian and pre-Victorian vampire stories, they're not what we think of as typical vampire stories. We typically think of the Hollywood vampire and kind of like, you know, the Bram Stoker, Dracula vampire, which is different from older vampire stories and some of the more recent, newer vampire stories where they've even changed things up. Even as far back as Anne Rice started to change things up from, you know, the stereotypical vampire. I gave this book um, three stars. It would have been probably two, but the book did pick up about halfway, maybe a little over halfway into the book, it finally picked up and started getting, uh, picked up the pace, became more exciting and stuff. So I gave it three stars. It wasn't wonderful, but it wasn't terrible. I don't know how well this book could be, you know, easy to find, but um, if you get a chance, check it out if you want to read something different and something um, wild and crazy because it was from the 80s and I've noticed that there's a lot of 70s and 80s books that are just horror books I mean that are just out there not to mention every time that I read the name John Ross I kept thinking of the son of J.R. Ewing on Dallas whose name was John Ross and I just every time I kept thinking about that but anyway that's my review um I don't have much more to say so I will see you guys next time with an all-new video of some sort uh take care and stay spooky. Bye-bye.